Welcome to the Essential Self-Care Podcast, where we talk about all things self-care for those of us who are, let's face it, too busy for self-care. It's time to bring that same compassion that you offer to everyone else in your life to yourself as well. In this podcast, you'll hear real life stories of how self-care transformed people's lives as they were going through life's storms. You'll learn practical, actionable tools to begin the self-care journey yourself as well. Because like I always say, small changes make a large impact. I'm your host, Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. I'm a physician, best-selling author, and the founder of Radiant Living Institute, where I guide strong, successful women to get unstuck and learn to live radiantly again through major life transitions. Through my signature program, Reclaim Your Radiance, you'll reclaim your worth, renew your energy, and restore your happiness in your life, career, and relationships. To get started, download your free guidebook, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life at RadiantLivingInstitute.com. Quick disclaimer before we get started, the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Always seek the advice of your own medical practitioner and or mental health provider about your specific situation. Now, let's get started. Today, I have the pleasure of bringing back to the show one of my best friends, Dr. Arthi Surya. In addition to being an all-around amazing human being, Dr. Surya is an integrative medicine physician based out of Michigan. Welcome back to the Essential Self-Care Podcast, Dr. Surya. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about our topic today. The last time Dr. Surya was on the show, she shared her personal experience with self-care, following her fun, and dancing. Today, Dr. Surya is going to share more on her expertise in regulating the nervous system as an important piece and path towards self-care. This is a topic that I'm also very passionate about, so I'm excited to dive right in. Uh, Me too. I geek out on this stuff. (laughs) Yeah. So let's get started. Tell me the basics to start off for someone who's never heard of the concept of regulating their nervous system. What do they need to know? Why is this even important? Why I think it's important and oftentimes actually the missing piece in how we're living in our day-to-day life or even in treatment is that it's a way to actually get connected with your body so that you can actually be in control of your physiology rather than your physiology controlling you. So I think it's actually a very powerful medicine, but it does require introspection and learning the cues that your body gives you and listening to them. So oftentimes in our modern culture, we're actually very dissociated and not listening to the cues and overriding our physiological responses for the sake of productivity or making sure you can do your job or, you know, there's a lot of stressors in our modern day that I think we're bombarded 24 seven. So it's uh, it's just a way to kind of gain control of that so that you know how to build resilience and then also where your boundaries should be. I agree with you. We spend so much time in our heads, honestly, in this intellectual realm and in our minds, as opposed to listening to our bodies. For me, this is where yoga and mind body practices have been really helpful because they, for not only myself, as well as clients I've worked with, have helped them to begin to tune into their body, just to even Mm -hmm. be aware of of the signals that your body is sending you. Right. And I think oftentimes what in our culture, we've normalized symptoms. So people don't realize that that's your body actually off balance. Absolutely. You know, Ayurveda says that if you are experiencing any symptoms at all, at all, even the mildest of symptoms, even if you feel a little bloated one day, or you have trouble sleeping one night, any symptoms at all are a sign that something is out of alignment within Uh your body, mind, or emotional realm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's a cultural thing, right? Like we're just not attuned. And even in our medical culture, we're not really, we've normalized symptoms, right? So like GERD is normal, headaches are normal, right? all of this stuff is normal, PMS is normal, and it's, it's not normal. And like you said, we've also normalized this idea of what our work schedule should look like, right? What, you know, we've normalized staying on the computer or our phones 
looking at this blue light screen into the late hours of the night, right? which I know you and I have talked a lot about how that affects your body's rhythms and your circadian right. rhythms, which does affect and influence your overall health and well-being as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So how do we begin to, and you know, we're talking about some really big ideas here because we're also talking about, you know, talking about things like work schedules. Sometimes you just can't change that you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we are talking about some really big topics here and we're talking about our physiology and kind of keeping in mind that there may be some things and some aspects to our lifestyles that we either can't readily change or certainly can't change easily or right in Mm -hmm. this moment. So what are some ways that our listeners can begin to raise this awareness of listening to their body's signals and begin to regulate that. Yeah. So I think it's nuanced, right? So what I like big picture, right? Identifying first, are you in a fight or flight state or are you in a kind of shutdown state? So there's fight or flight and then rest and digest, but your body also can go kind of past rest and digest where it's actually shut down. So that can show up as like fatigue, feeling depressed or pain, immune system regulation stuff. And then on the other side, fight or flight, you can feel like angry, irritable, anxious. So kind of listening to your emotion and figuring out, are you on more of, I got to run away from the tiger or do I need more energy in the system? Cause I feel depleted. So your practice is going to definitely change depending on what state you're in, if that makes sense. Because like, if you're already depleted and shut down and stuff, a restorative yoga thing is probably not going to be helpful for you. Right. Like that's mm-hmm. going to just aggravate that. So you're probably going to want something more like actually, if you're too fatigued, maybe listening to a little bit of upbeat music that Mm -hmm. is going to cause neuronal shifts in the brain so that that can bring in more energy into the system. On the fight or flight side, it's like, okay, if you're totally fight or flight, your body's interpreting like you got to move away from a tiger, right? So meditating at that point is probably not your best bet. Like this is where it's like, you know, people are trying to meditate. They can feel like they're failing but they're not failing. It's actually physiologically, you're not supposed to meditate if you're running away from a tiger. That's Mm -hmm. not going to get you to be safe. So discharging that energy in some sort of way, like jumping jacks or push-ups or whatever is authentic to you, right? Like Mm -hmm. dancing, whatever it may be, right? And then after you kind of discharge that energy, then kind of you can calm down in some way, like do a walk and slowly bring your nervous system back, orient to your environment right? Like naming five things you see, four things you feel, smell, taste, all of our senses actually are there for a reason. They were meant to protect us. Mm -hmm. And we're forgetting to use those senses as a way to regulate our nervous system. And so, you know, like I think in our, we're very, you know, both you and I are trained in both conventional medicine and, you know, integrative medicine and for you, Ayurveda, there's just, we're so conditioned to think that if you're doing something, it has to come in a pill or an intervention. And it doesn't like you're, we're missing all these opportunities for other medicine that has a physiological effect on the body. So my whole thing is like, we got to use all our senses because that's the way to tell your brain it's safe, brain and body it's safe. Absolutely. And just like you said, you know, you mentioned pill or intervention, like so often people think that you need a pill or intervention and, and often actually what they what I've found often what people think they need is that the intervention is the pill, right? And maybe mm-hmm. sometimes it is, you know, Absolutely. Both, They're both tools. you and I were definitely not saying that that's not an option. Yeah. You know, it definitely is. And, and of course, always follow the guidance of your physician, your personal physician. What we're also saying though, is that these practices that Dr. Surya just mentioned, those are also interventions. Right. They're not a pill, but those are also interventions. And so also broadening and expanding your concept of what an intervention is and what, what your definition of this is, this is my medicine Mm -hmm. for this situation right now. Right. Again, neither of us are discounting pills at all. We know they're very helpful. I use them every day. Exactly. We both believe there's a place for both. We also believe that it can be very empowering to learn these ways and continue to build your toolkit of interventions that can help you feel better. Right. Exactly. 
And so I know the hot topic in wellness is the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve is, you know, the nerve that kind of travels from the brain to various organs in your body. So when you're doing these tools, you're regulating and toning the vagus nerve, which is going to then create a physiological response in the body, like a drug, like Mm -hmm. a supplement, like a pill, whatever, like an intervention, but without the side effects, right? Like the side effects are much more positive. (laughs) So I think like for you and I, what we've seen is that people think that if you've done the pill or the intervention, that's the, that's it. And I see like patients still struggle actually, because Mm -hmm. another aspect of your physiology has not been addressed at all. And it's not sexy, right? That's the thing. I think we've like kind of glamorized or like you and I are in, you're in Ayurveda, I'm in integrated medicine. I, what I see is that we've glamorized these supplements and it's like, Ooh, it's natural. And it's like, okay, that's not the point, right? Like yeah, that's not, you're absolutely. still missing the point. Yeah. You know, in Ayurveda, often when people learn that I've studied Ayurveda, one of their first questions to me is, well, what herb or supplement should I take for such and such? And although herbs and supplements are a big part of Ayurveda, I certainly don't discount that. They are a big part of Ayurveda. I actually specialize in working with people on the lifestyle aspects, their daily habits and daily routines through Ayurveda to initially restore alignment in their bodies, minds, and emotions. Mm -hmm. And Ayurveda actually says that if the lifestyle isn't addressed, the herbs and supplements aren't going to do what they have their optimal effect. Agree. Agree. And I think that's the culture that we're seeing. And like you said, it isn't, it isn't the quote unquote sort of sexy part of this, right? Like, because it's hard making lifestyle changes can be hard, but this is also where, you know, something that we talked about in the last episode that you were on is starting small, starting with small shifts. So for example, with what you were describing of noticing, having that body awareness and noticing, okay, am I in fight and flight? Am I, you know, do I have all of this energy or am I in, that shut down. Mm-hmm. kind of shut down state, you know, first just starting to cultivate that awareness of your own body and then starting small to make some shifts there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, the more we can bring awareness to that, the more I think people will start to head in the right direction. Right. And it has like a positive effect on those around you too. Like if you start to regulate your nervous system, that has a positive effect on someone else that you're like interacting with. Absolutely. Um, And actually I have found that like, my gosh, my understanding of this has helped me see what I thought would have been annoying or rude in someone. I can understand it a little bit better. Like, Oh, they're probably, you know, in this sort of state and okay. Like I can understand that. I can see it with a little bit more compassion rather than be more reactive. Um, Right. Because the more we understand ourselves better, the more we're able to understand those around us better and have greater compassion and empathy for them as well. And that's why I always say it all starts within, right? This is the whole idea behind Radiant Living Institute is that it all starts within. And I, and the other thing I always say is that the most important relationship in your life is the relationship you have with yourself, because that is truly the foundation for everything else. So like you just said, the more you understand yourself better, the more you're able to understand others around you as well. Right. Exactly. And then the way you approach them will change too. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's nice to see that. So what would you say, just to kind of recap, we talked about a lot of different things here. So just to kind of recap in your words, for someone who is just starting out, for someone who's like, I don't have that body awareness. I have, mm-hmm. I haven't tuned into my body. I don't even know where to start. Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. would you advise them to start? So I would just say like, if you're like, let's say you're doing dishes, feel your feet on the ground. And then you can like play with it a little bit, like move your feet one way, move your, like shift your weight a little bit. Then you can, that's all automatically building body awareness, right? Because you might think you're not doing anything, but that's a lot actually going on where you're getting the sensory input into the brain basically, right? And you're being aware of it. And then if you're doing dishes, like feeling the temperature of the water, feeling the dish, like, okay. And then literally just being like, okay, I'm going to now put the dish underneath the water and then wash it. And like literally being in every moment that is actually creating those neural pathways and bringing awareness to it because there's the portion of the brain called the insula where all the sensory input comes in. And we 
because of our fight or flight state for most of us, <laughs> that is disconnected for a lot of us, right? So you're literally reconnecting the body to the brain. So simple things like that, just start there. I love that. I love that. You know, you know, Dr. Surya, you and I have done so many different sort of platforms, Instagram lives, Facebook mm-hmm. lives, different things on this topic. And one theme that we always go back to is go back to basics. Yes. Go back to the basics. Yes. And, and that's something I'm hearing here. Like go back to the basics. I'm also hearing elements of be present and mindful because that's mm-hmm. exactly what you were describing, which is being aware of your senses, like get yeah. back in touch with your five senses. So in this, in in the advice that you just gave of washing dishes, like that's of washing take, dishes, yeah. it's taking, take one activity in your day, take one body part to focus on and just notice how it feels. Notice mm-hmm. all the sensations in it. And I'll be on like for people who are really shut down, this, this might take some time. Like, that's why mm-hmm. I'm like, whatever, because you're numbed out basically. Right. So it might actually take some time to rebuild those pathways, but be patient. Right. And uh, it might feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Exactly. But that's why you go low and slow. You don't want to, yeah. you can't actually go really fast yeah. when you're kind of retraining the nervous system. And that's why also it can be very helpful and wise to seek the guidance of someone who is an expert in this. So yes, yeah. that being said, how can people find out more about you and yeah. your work? Yeah. So I'm on uh, Instagram at Dr. A. Surya, on Facebook at Arthi Surya MD, and I'm at GroverHealth.com. So come say hello. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your wisdom with us. Yeah. And thank you for having me on. It's always so lovely talking to you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, leave a positive review, and share this episode with someone you know. And remember, your free guide, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life, is waiting for you at radiantlivinginstitute.com. Download it today.